question for you. If I found your brain mm -hmm. in as a fossil mm -hmm. in 70 million years time, okay. how would I be able to tell anything about you? This is my friend Dustin, a dinosaur whisperer, dinosaur book author, and a host of The Dinosaur Show. Well, first, you wouldn't find my brain. You might find mm -hmm. my skull, and then you could take an endocast, which would be... What, what is an endocast for those playing along at home? For those at home, in um, yeah. Endocast, you take some sort of rubber-like substance and you put it inside the empty space inside the skull okay. where your brain cavity or your brain actually was. Uh, yeah. But now, more often than not, we're using CT scanners to take an actual digital Endocast. Digital Endocast. Right. So from a brain cast, from an Endocast, um, we can tell generally the size and shape of the brain. Usually we can't see exact structures, mm -hmm. um, but we can tell the general size and the shape. Okay. Of the brain. So what does a T-Rex brain look like? So a T-Rex brain is about generally the same length and size of a human brain, except mm -hmm. for way less bulbous, more like long and skinny. Okay. Almost like a, a balloon that you choose to make a balloon animal. So we actually physically sculpted a T-Rex brain out of clay. So it's like this. Exactly. Do I look like a T-Rex? You look like a T-Rex now. I do not. So what do we know about a T-Rex, about their behavior or their like, abilities based on filling the skull with a mold. Okay, so you fill the skull with a mold, you make an endocast, and based on this one in particular, we can see it's got a ginormous olfactory bone, which mm -hmm. tells us that T-Rex used its sense of smell a lot. It was very mm -hmm. important to them, much less so than even vision, even though we know in Jurassic Park they say its vision was based on movement, that's not true. In us, we can smell one trillion smells, probably more than one trillion smells. What about a T-Rex? Can we estimate how many smells a T-Rex could smell? I don't know that we could estimate the number of smells a T-Rex mm. could smell. I think we can estimate the um, the level of, like the quality of its sense of smell, uh -huh. how much better it is compared to ours or compared to a dog's, mm. based on the size of the olfactory bulb. We definitely know that sense of smell is incredibly important for them. Probably specifically for hunting or for scavenging. I mean, we generally look at animals alive today um, yeah. and we can we can think about their intelligence level based on generally the overall size of the brain compared to their body size. There's something called an encephalization quotient, uh, EQ yeah. for short. Mm -hmm. And so for an animal that is a certain size, you expect it to have a certain size brain. And if it was right along what those mm -hmm. ex expectation was, mm -hmm. it'd be a one numerically. Humans have an enormous brain for our body yeah. size. So yeah. our EQ is way above seven. Some dolphins around four and a half, uh, chimps a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. And so for T-Rex, its EQ or encephalization quotient was a little over one. So 1.5 ish. Okay. So its brain is only slightly larger than we would imagine for an animal its size. I've heard that Absolutely. some dinosaur brains are the size of a walnut. Yeah. Is there any truth to that? Absolutely. So okay. giant dinosaurs like yeah. Apatosaurus, Brontosaurus, yeah. slightly larger than a walnut. And that animal is way bigger than the T-Rex. Do you think that's because because they don't really have to hunt for their food. I mean, I yep. know there's this like scavenger predator mm -hmm. to make the T-Rexes, but with, with herbivores, it's kind of easier to imagine them just like, hmm, leave. Yeah, no, exactly. Just you like need... f finding, like coming across food. It's a lot easier. Well, I think another good point is that dinosaurs had smooth brains. A lot of yeah. animals have smooth brains. Even mice have smooth brains. I didn't know that. So humans have all of these like bumps and, and- Folds. Folds, bumps and folds, I guess. Grooves, bumps and grooves. It's rhythmic. Okay. Uh, but what it does, it just increases the surface area of your cerebral cortex, right? So if you took the like all of these folded bits off your brain, you could spread it out so it would be the size of a newspaper. It can fit a lot more neurons and a lot more connections. And mm -hmm. th there's just like more happening in here. I think what a lot of this comes back to is how you uh, kind of infer brain function mm -hmm. from brain structure, Absolutely. right? Uh, this is somewhat therapeutic. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like you're cutting the... a slice of, <laughs> slices of bread right now. Do you think that the T-Rex brain is the original bird brain? Um, no. Oh, I, there thought, are I other... thought that was a good joke. <laughs> T-Rex is somewhere between a bird brain and what we would think of as traditional reptile brain. It means that we have a large olfactory bulb, definitely relying on a sense of smell a lot, but as far as processing, mm -hmm. making decisions, much smaller areas of the brain correlated with that um, than, mm. for instance, modern birds or even mm -hmm. other dinosaurs like mm. uh, Velociraptor. Probably much smarter mm -hmm. than a T-Rex with a more bird-like brain, less reptilian brain than a T-Rex. Mm -hmm. Well, there you have it. 
So Dustin also has a YouTube channel called The Dinosaur Show, which is really cool. I quite love dinosaurs, so I enjoy your videos Thank you. quite a lot. I am on The Dinosaur Show with Dustin, uh, where we just really talk about me. <laughs> not, not much to do with yeah. dinosaurs at it's all. It's basically a therapy session. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so if you would like to see that, highly recommend it. Uh, I'll put a link to it here so you can just kind of boop and, and then you get to find out what your favorite dinosaur is. You get to is. find out what my favorite dinosaur is. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.